Let's go. Okay, let's go. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but there, all I'm, uh, I guess what I'm interested in is the personal story. Like kind of like um, who you are and, and why you're here and then what you're up to, man. Like, you know, like just a little bit of insight. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so I'm Jake Hutchinson from uh, Evergreen, Colorado. And um, I grew up when my family got, I got really lucky and got to travel a good bit. Um, and the first big trip I went on was in 2009, I went to Tanzania in Africa and worked in a school there. And from then I was just kind of hooked on traveling. And um, so the past summer I saved up, um, worked all summer uh, and kind of just brainstormed on this trip. And it wasn't a lot of planning that went on, but uh, it's kind of part of the fun. So we flew into uh, Europe and then been traveling overland through a bunch of places there, then into Russia and then down through, let's see, Mongolia, and then we're headed to uh, China and Southeast Asia after that. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome, 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 man. Uh, I'm Elliot Burke. Most people call me Otter. <laughs> <Same name. laughs> pretty cool, I guess. Uh, I grew up in Evergreen, Colorado in the mountains and a pretty wealthy family, so every time I traveled, it was just resorts, and they are all the same no matter what country we were in, so that got real tiring. So definitely cool to be on the other end and staying with the locals, and then, yeah, just grew up a little different, so just kind of did my own thing, love the outdoors, just absolutely just blew up with that, so that made that my whole life, and then traveling just makes it so much better. And we're we're in Mongolia right now, so yeah. we're in Ulaanbaatar, yeah, yeah, you know? So it's working out. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> so you guys, look, I got a bunch of guys that seem like they make all the excuses in the world for not traveling. You know, everybody just stick in the mud. They think that somehow the internet makes up for it and you can just see somebody through the top, which I think is great. Yeah. It's really great. You can meet some cool people, but what have you benefited from actually being on the ground and actually seeing and touching people? I mean, it's like you, you get to experience the culture so much more. Like you can see something about a cult, the culture online, but you can't experience that. Like you can't taste the food and, and you know, hear, hear like, like on the bus the other day, they were, they were uh, singing and it was like, you don't experience stuff like that, and, um, you know on the internet gotcha yeah you know, a lot of things like you and like you can google all these things and like a lot of it you can find but just most of it you would never like think to look up it's just like when a local walked up to me the other day it's just like oh come stay with my, me you know, I just called my wife walk in and you know they actually didn't really have a room for us at the time so <laughs> <laughs> we ended up just kind of like chilling in their little house and like they didn't really care they just kind of like let us play with their kids and we taught them instruments and stuff like that like you there's no like you can't just like pay to go do that I, you know, it's just, Kind of like in the moment stuff that's just like makes the whole trip. Yeah. So you, somebody's traveling with a musical instrument, right? Yeah, yeah. I brought a. Uh, I actually didn't bring it. I bought it in Germany. Um, a little ukulele. Gotcha. And it's it's great for like kind of breaking the ice with people. It's, you play, pull that out like on the um, on the Trans Siberian. There's a group of Russians sitting next to us, and they kind of. They, were, they didn't really interact with us at first, but then when they saw the ukulele, they, they couldn't get enough of it, and it was, it was super fun. I mean, we ended up talking with them a lot, which is, you know, we got, and we'll try to talk to them. Right. <laughs> that was really cool. It hasn't been destroyed yet. Hang on. <laughs> Surprisingly. So have you seen anything that um, kind of moved you as far as, like, you know, you're sitting out, you're doing stuff. Have you seen anything while you travel that kind of moved you and, and part of you is kind of like, man, I wonder if I can fix that or I wonder if I can work towards that or or something that you've seen about the human condition that kind of impacted you in a, a serious way? Um, I haven't really seen it yet, but one thing we've been doing is we've been looking for ways to help, like uh, especially in Southeast Asia, we've been doing research with the email people <coughs> and it's actually like, kind of sounds awful, but it, we haven't found a good way to help yet. It's pretty like hard. Like a lot of the, like an orphanage, it's, uh, not saying I wouldn't pay them for it, but it was $250 to go help out, and I, if I had the money, I really wish I could pay that, but I'm broke, I'm 18, I can't, you know, pay an orphanage to work there. I wish I could work there, but you have to work there for three weeks minimum if you do it without paying them, and everything else, it's like you have to sign up ahead of time. There's an orphanage here that we went to, that we went to check out, and all they do is they'll offer a city tour and you pay them for it and the money goes to the orphanage, but you can't help them out in any way. And we've really had trouble with that, just finding ways to help out. And I think that's probably a problem to like make it more accessible to people to just come help out, like accept our help, not just take our money and do their own thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, guys, man, good luck on your travels. Thank I have you. a lot of good luck on your travels. But, uh, um,